Andrew's in Halifax. Hi, Andrew. Morning, Tom. Hello. Well, first of all, I, I'm a passionate Brexiteer. Uh, so many times the station to, to you know, articulate that fact. But mm -hmm. certainly, I agree with you that a good deal for this country would be better than a no deal. However, it's not the case that any deal will be better than a no deal. The problem I have with Hammond's intervention is not just that his previous messages have been shown to be demonstrably false. If you remember the, the little Pravda booklet that the, the government sent out before the referendum uh, you know, forecast all sorts of apocalypse. Yes, he wasn't scenario. the Chancellor then, but yes. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. That's true. But also, uh, I think there's a point which a lot of people, especially in London, haven't touched up on, and that is the fact that Leavers have been on the receiving end of criticism, vituperation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. calumny, whatever you want to call it, that, <laughs> that if directed against black, Asian, gay, Jewish people in society, that you know those people would have been condemned for it. We you think you've been get... abused on that scale? Oh, I, I think Leave voters have been abused by uh, the liberal establishment and, and their supporters in the media in a way that no other group uh, in, in contemporary British history has been. Really? And th yes, but I do. It... And, and it's right. got to the stage now where people like me wouldn't trust Philip Hammond or Anna Soubry if they told me that it was Friday and that the weather was sunshine and scattered showers. <laughs> this, is, this is the problem, that if the Remain voters had sought to, oh, well, I'm, I'm not saying all Remain voters, I think a lot of Remain voters are very reasonable people who had a different vision for me but have accepted the outcome. I'm talking about these continuity types. Such and you would put you know, Philip Hammond in that bracket, even though he is a... Because, because what, if he was so uncomfortable with what he was about to, to be involved in, and mm. he sits around the cabinet table and he's involved in the, the, the uh, EU SNN meetings, the strategy and negotiation meetings, mm -hmm. where, where the very, very senior members of the cabinet who set out the European negotiating strategy meet um, quite regularly, he's involved in that. If he was so uncomfortable with what he was about to help do, he, he would have to resign. But it depends what you define as what it, what is the do, what is the end objective, and and I, I've become increasingly convinced that this is a cabinet that's determined to deliver Brexit in name only, uh, and the good deal that I'd like to see, I don't think is deliverable under Chequers, and I certainly don't think is deliverable Why? under Theresa May. Why? Because because their heart is not in this. But uh, <laughs> that's what I don't. That that's really what I don't understand because. Because the only person whose heart is going to be in this in the way in which you want it to be, Andrew, might might actually just be you. <laughs> no. No. I, I, I mean, I, I think that's an absurd claim. But, but you, you the, might disagree with Michael Gove's version of, of, of what Brexit looks no. like, or, or with what Douglas Carswell's version. You know, you, you might disagree with all of it, in which case the only person you're going to be satisfied that can deliver this to your heart's desire is yourself. No, I, I don't believe that at all. Um, and I think the size of the mandate in the referendum, yes, it shows there are many different interpretations of leave, but I also think the people aren't stupid enough to believe in the round that what Theresa May is delivering under checkers is anything like what we were promised would be delivered before the referendum was called and during the referendum campaign. If you were told that what you were promised couldn't happen now, let's leave the fact that it might not happen at all, but couldn't happen now, would you be mm -hmm. satisfied to wait to the point at which the country is ready to come out with, with no deal whatsoever and we can have incremental divergence? Well, in that respect, so that, that comes down to a, a trust not only in the, in the country's capabilities, which I do have, but in the goodwill of the EU, which I most certainly don't have. And I think the precedent for that has been set by the fact that Tusk said, yes, we could have a, a Canada plus plus deal, which I think Peter Lilly mentioned, mm -hmm. providing that we are prepared to allow the EU to annex a part of our sovereign and constitutional territory. Yeah, well, in we order can't to do that. Pay people no, we can't do that, and we won't so, do that. So that deal is, that, that, that option is off the table then, because we, we can't possibly annex part of the United Kingdom. Andrew, I appreciate your call. Thank you.